So these four bullets represent the key best practices for row or aisle level airflow management. We'll get into much greater detail on each of these on some of the subsequent slides, but I wanted to do a quick overview right now. So the first thing is blocking off open spaces under the racks. So cabinets are often delivered with casters and levelers to aid with initial deployment. So if your cabinets have casters and levelers, then by default, you'll, have, you'll end up with a gap between the floor and the bottom of the rack and blocking this gap is what we're referring to here. The second is sealing open spaces in the cabinet rows. So depending on site conditions, some layouts will end up with gaps between the racks due to support structures, other types of barriers in the room, or intentional space that's been left there for a future roll-in rack. Um, installing aisle end doors. So this prevents the wraparound mixing that will occur at the aisle ends if doors are not used. So doors are very important and they're available in many designs from a variety of manufacturers. And we'll get into greater detail about doors on some of the subsequent slides. And lastly, the top of rack containment. So hot aisle containment typically features an above rack barrier around the perimeter of the hot aisle and typically extends upwards from the racks to the top of the ceiling or vice versa from the ceiling down to the top of the racks. And cold aisle containment could involve a roof or a capped aisle or even a partially capped aisle that, ex that spans across the cold aisle. And again, more to come on both of these as we get into the presentation. For containment, typically installing containment above the cabinets is done for higher density environments, but it's also potentially very important for other uh, layouts in the room where there may be a low ceiling and when the cooling units may be on opposing walls, causing the exhaust air from a hot aisle to flow over the top of a cold aisle to get back to the cooling units. Um, they're always gonna improve, uh, provide some improvement and enable the further reduction of fan speeds and, and potentially raising <clears throat> cooling unit set points to further optimize the room. Containment this time. So you heard me earlier talk about hot aisle containment is building a vertical perimeter around the hot aisle uh, from the tops of the racks to a ceiling. Um, hot aisle containment um, most times um, is used in the scenario where you've got an overhead return plenum above a drop ceiling. Uh, that's the case in the photo you see in the top left there. And you know there's gonna be uh, perforated kind of register tiles um, in the ceiling instead of the, the, the solid tiles that you're typically familiar with and you see here. So the hot air is gonna be filling the hot aisle and hot air rises. So it's gonna rise up and be drawn back to the intake of the perimeter air conditioning units in that room. And the key is there that they are also ducted directly to the overhead plenum, like you see in the photo on the bottom, right? So that's a, a black ductwork sitting on top of uh, one of the vertive, new vertive uh, uh, AC units that's also the similar color. Uh, you can see that there's a, there's a hinge door there so you can get in and change filters, but that's, that's a key component to making all of this work. Everything's ducted to an overhead ceiling return. What you see in the top right, this is a rigid hot aisle containment design. It's using rigid panels to make that um, perimeter from the top of the rack to the ceiling. There's also a play here for flexible hot aisle containment. And I'm talking about kind of using curtains, um, uh, the flexible polycarbonate wall material um, that can be used uh, uh, people who usually refer to curtains like meat lockers, but there's definitely a play for them in hot aisle containment, specifically when you have varying elevations of power and cable management. So you see a uh, ladder rack and then a yellow fiber tray here. They're running parallel to these rows, but oftentimes you, you have things cutting across the rows. So it's, it's tricky, right? You've got to navigate around different widths, different heights, different elevations, um, and it's easier to trim some curtain material to kind of navigate around those overhead obstructions and still have a good seal for your hot aisle containment. So there is a play for curtains there. So the hot aisle containment can be rigid or flexible. And I would just add that if, uh, if you don't have a, a ceiling return plenum, but you do have a, a high ceiling in the room, 
So hot oil containment could still be an option for you in that scenario, in which case you would um, raise the uh, top of the hot oil, you know, off the racks, kind of all the way up to where the jurisdiction says you have to remain X amount of inches, usually 18 from a sprinkler head and stop it there. And you do the same for the air conditioning unit. You would raise that intake up. You just wouldn't be coupling it to a, to a drop ceiling. You would raise it up and that increases the Delta T. You're going to be returning a lot warmer air to the air conditioning unit. And when Lars talks about the uh, science and the Delta T's later on, you'll understand why that's important. I appreciate that distinction, Rob. That's a really important point to, to make that there's a lot of misconceptions in the industry uh, about airflow science and, and cooling optimization. And, and that's a very uh, important, very nice example of how uh, a creative solution can really improve the efficiency. On the right here, we see the upside aisle lock um, rack top baffles in a vertical configuration. So the, there's uh, two different skews. One is angled, as I showed you for the cold aisle, and the other skew is vertical, generally used for a hot aisle. But these can also be used for a cold aisle when there is overhead delivery, ducted supply onto, say, a slab environment. And you just need to create a higher rim for the bathtub on the cold aisle. But generally, the vertical baffles are used on a hot aisle, and they block the airflow from flowing right over the hot exhaust air from flowing right over the top of the cabinet into the cold aisle. Once you get it moving in the right direction, and if the ceiling plenum is being used for a return, and there are uh, the openings, the, the registers, the return air registers in that drop ceiling are appropriately placed, then this you know, partial hot aisle containment solution can easily get you 80, 90, percent of the benefits of what a fully enclosed hot aisle containment solution could get you. These baffles are also modular in that there's one per cabinet and they're sized to match the, si the uh, width of the cabinets.